Algebra 2 Common Core Recursive Sequences. So the previous video we learned about explicit sequences, and uh, let me just review those uh, real quick, that the arithmetic or linear uh, explicit formula was that a sub n, any term, we can get if we know the first term, plus n minus 1 times d, your common difference, and this was a uh, you know plus d, plus d, plus d uh, sequence. The geometric or exponential sequences, a sub n is your first term times r raised to the n minus 1. So your rate is your base of an exponential function, and it's times r, times r, times r. And what's good about these explicit formulas is that I could find the 50th term if I know the first term and the common difference, or the first term and the rate. I could find the 50th term. I don't need to know any other terms other than the first term and the pattern. Well, the recursive sequence uh, are equations that have a starting term, so you still need to know the first term, but every term in the sequence is based on the previous term, and that's really the key to recursive. It's all about every term is based on the previous term. So in that case, like to find the 50th term of something, I need to know the 49th. And so it's all about how do I get from one specific term to the next? See, the explicit formulas allow us to just jump to the 50th term. A recursive is, is they can still be arithmetic and geometric, but they require you to always kind of know the previous term. Um, so you'll see some similar notation. We still have a sub 1, which is, you know, the starting value, which is the first term. And we'll still have a sub n. But you'll see that your recursive equations for a sub n, like a sub n equals, like we have here, but if it's recursive, it'll include an a sub n minus 1 which means the previous term. Like think about it, if you had n, the next term would be n plus 1. Like if this is the fifth term, the sixth term is plus 1. The seventh term would be n plus 2, and so on. Well, what's the previous term? Well, if this was the fifth term, one less would be the fourth term, right? So n minus 1 is the term before n. So a sub n minus 1 stands for previous term. Like in this first example, write the first five terms of the sequence a sub 1 equals negative 4. So they give you the first term is a sub 1 is negative 4. But then they say a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 5. And so this could be translated to a sub n still means any term, but a sub n minus 1 is the previous term plus 5. So these are always talking about, and that's uh, what's always like this for recursive, even if it's slightly different notation. It's always any term, it's something about the term before it, and, and that's what the formula is. It says the previous plus 5. It could be previous times 5. It could be previous squared. It could be previous times 2 plus 7, you know, whatever it is. But it's all about something happening to the previous. So what's the first five terms here? Well, the first term, a sub 1, we know is negative 4. They always have to give you a first term because I can't use the previous term if I don't have something to start with. So that's why recursive formulas always include a first term and a formula to get to the next. And so a sub 2 would be your previous term plus 5. So that would be negative 4 plus 5 comes out to be 1. a sub 3, your previous term plus 5 is 6. a sub 4, your previous term plus 5 is 11. a sub 5, your previous term plus 5 is 16. So the sequence would be negative 4, 1, uh, 6, 11, 16. And you see that what's happening is this is an arithmetic sequence, and the pattern is plus 5. Now if I want to write it as an explicit formula, well, the first thing I need to do is identify that it is arithmetic slash linear. And remember that my explicit formula for arithmetic is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And to write this formula, I need to know two things. I need to know the first term. Got it for us. Check. So it means a sub 1 equals negative 4 plus, I'm leaving it as n minus 1. Like I want a generic formula for this. I'm not finding a specific term. I want the formula to find any term without knowing previous. That's what explicit is times d. Well, d we just figured out. It's plus 5. Positive 5. And that makes sense because looking at this, it's telling me it's the previous plus 5. 
radius plus five, radius plus five. That's what makes it arithmetic is it has a common difference of five. This can be left like this in some cases, but we could also distribute this in here and make it negative four plus five n minus five and combine some like terms and it could be written as five n minus nine. You can combine these like terms. So like that would be the explicit formula for this arithmetic sequence where this is the recursive formula for this arithmetic sequence. So arithmetic and geometric sequences can be written in one of the one of two ways and we can convert back and forth. Uh, just knowing, you know, a couple of key pieces of information. Uh, the next sequence, notice what's different about this. They still give a first term as six. Like they still gave a first term like we did here. It's a different number, but it's they give it the first term. Remember that the recursive formula started with a sub n and then a sub n minus one was previous. Well this one's starting with a sub n plus one and has a sub n in there. So is it still any term and previous? Yes, it is. And that's what this was saying up here, that sometimes it'll start with a sub n plus 1, not a sub n. But in that case, that just makes a sub n the previous. Again, you know, look at this. When we started at n, the previous was n minus 1. Well, if I start at n plus 1, then the previous is n. So don't let that confuse you. If, if you do see any recursive formulas that start with a sub n plus 1, it's still, this is any term, and in the equation side over here where there's other numbers and stuff, there's still going to be previous. Like, this would still translate to any term is one half of the previous times the previous plus four. And the fact that this is a half times the previous tells me this is a geometric. And so if a sub one equals six, what's a sub two? Well, it's half of the previous, so half of that 6, plus 4. Half of 6 is 3, plus 4 is 7. And a sub 3 is half of 7, plus 4. I'll keep these fractions. Uh, half of 7 is 7 over 2, plus 4. Well, uh, plus 4 can be thought of as 8 over 2, this way they're both fractions, and that's uh, 15 over 2. I guess this would be very simple with a calculator. Same, 7.5 is the decimal equivalent. I'm trying to do this without a calculator in my head right now. Uh, a sub 4 is going to be half of that previous term, 15 over 2, plus 4. Uh, half of 15 over 2 is 15 over 4. Just multiply the fractions, multiply the top, multiply the bottom. And then plus 4 is like plus 16 over 4. I want a common denominator. And that's going to come out to be 31 over 4. So this is kind of an annoying sequence here, 6, 7, 15 halves, 31 fourths, but it's still, it's half the previous plus 4. But because I'm doing half times the previous, that tells me it's geometric. So if I want to write the explicit formula here, which is usually a sub n is first times r to the n minus 1. Now this is actually a complicated example here, I'll explain why in a second. My first term is 6. My rate, what am I multiplying the previous by, is a half n minus 1. But I left, if I left it just like that, I'd, I'd be missing something, though, because, like, let me test it. I know a sub 2 is supposed to be 7. Well, when I do a sub 2 here, if I plug in a 2 here, I get 6 times a half, uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's just a half, and 6 times a half is 3. The answer is supposed to be 7. That's because this half times the previous, that's what this is, but if I have a plus 4 tagged on the end, I still actually need that here. Um, and so, it can be difficult converting explicit to recursive and back and forth, but like I said, you can always test it. If you know your second term, plug it into both, make sure you get the same thing. You know your third term, plug it into both, make sure you get the same thing. Uh, but it doesn't matter if the formula start with a sub n and give you the previous as n minus 1, or if it starts with a sub n plus 1 and the previous is a sub n. I mean, it could, it could start with a sub n plus 7. And then it would just be the previous would be represented by a sub n plus 6. You know, one less than that. Um, sorry if you heard the bell in the background. We're about to change classes. And so this last one, real quick, I just want to show you that this, not all recursive formulas are arithmetic or geometric. This one is using t instead of a, but no big deal. It's just saying that any term is the previous squared plus 3. And so that's not arithmetic. That's not geometric. That's just... You know, it's not times something, it's not plus something. I mean, I guess it's times itself, but that's not the same thing. So we could find our four terms here, but 
Like I said, the bell just rang in the background, so I got to go. Cut it a little short. Oh, Ten minutes exactly. There you go. All right, so that's recursive sequences. It's all about how do we get from the previous to the next. See ya.